unto us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. It's time for the tithe and offerings. Uh, we're going to play a video or there is somebody reading. Okay, uh, Tibora will read for us as the deacons take the tithes and offerings. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. The title of our reading today is going to be The Greatest Purpose of Faithfulness. Our verse is coming from Proverbs 23, verse 26, which says, My son, I give, you, give me your heart and, then, and let your eyes observe my ways. Today's scripture describes God's greatest interest. He wants our hearts which have turned away from him because of sin to return to him. We could call it a character transformation. A quote from Ellen G. White says, the tithing system I saw would develop character and manifest the true state of the heart. This is the true purpose of faithfulness, to develop character and manifest what rules our hearts. We need to understand that the use of tithes and offerings is one thing, and the purpose of tithes and offerings is something completely different. Tithes and offerings are used to advance the cause of God, but the purpose of returning tithe and offering is the development of our character. So when we talk about faithfulness in church or to our children, we should not just argue that God's cause needs resources and that the mission needs to advance and therefore we need to be faithful. What we really should emphasize is our selfishness takes over our hearts when we are not faithful to God. Imagine, for example, a child receives an allowance of 10 pounds from his parents and returns one pound of tithing and another pound of offering. Over five years, she will have returned 60 pounds of tithe and another 60 pounds of offering. This money certainly will not cause a great impact on the preaching of the gospel of God in the world, but is capable of causing a, a great impact on the character of the child over the five years. What is most important to God is not the monetary difference our offering will make, but the difference it will make in revealing where our treasure truly is. Therefore, I am faithful. I'm not faithful because I will get something back, not because God's cause depends on me, but because I understand the role of faithfulness in transforming my character. The appeal today is to ask God to help you understand the importance of faithfulness to character formation and transformation. Ask him to help you be faithful in all aspects of life, including your tithes and offerings and helping those in need. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all you have done for us, Lord. Please help us in everything we do. Allow our hearts to learn to be faithful in all aspects of life so that we may be advents of your message, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. It's time for the children's story, and our lovely sister Kiana is going to give us the children's story. Okay, uh, Auntie Judith is going to give us the children's story. I'll pull your chair. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Hello, children. Oh, that's lovely. Well, I got something really nice for you in the kitchen. Hello, children. No, not the big ones. <laughs> Hello. No, let, let's start again. Hello, children. 
Oh, I got something for you as well. Let's start again. Hi, children. Happy Sabbath. Oh, I got something for all the children, not the grown ups. Yes, okay. Now, now, I want to tell you a story. Now, I was young like you all, yeah? And I did not used to sit properly in church just like you. Now, the grown-ups at the back, they might think, oh, they're very nice, isn't it? But we were like you all as well. Would you like to hear my story? Yes. Right, okay. Now, you little one, come. You bring her, come. You bring her. Come. Right, okay. No. Yeah, that, that's fine. Now, I think maybe I was about 10, 11 at, the, at that time, myself and my two cousins, right? But children, during school holidays, we never like to stay home. You want to know why? Because our parents give us too much work to do. Right. So what we used to do during the school holiday, we prefer to go to the garden. Then we're able to play. But we have to bring something back home. Anyway, one day we went to the garden. And on our way back home, we saw this little person. We thought it was a child. But as we walked closer, it was a proper man. And the funny part about it, this little man, he had, <laughs> he had something like this on his head. It was a very big bunch of banana on his head. Now, now you hold the mic for me. You, you hold the mic. Come, come close to me. You hold the mic. Come, come. come st you stand here. And I'm going to... I'm going to pretend now. Now, this man, he had this on his head. <laughs> right. Okay, let, let, let's, let's walk a bit. Let's walk a bit. Right, okay, you, 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 you hold the mic in my, from there for them to hear. And as the, as the man was walking, now, this young girl, right, okay, and I have another one here, okay, right, so that's three of us, and this little man, he's walking with a bunch of banana on his head, right, so then, what we did, three of us now, we, we stay at a distance, and then every time the man make a step, we come close to him, close to him, and then, when the man turn around, what do you think happened, children? Eh, what, what do you think happened, children? Grown-ups, help them. Come. Right, okay. Now, what happened? You, you could stay close to me. Right, and hold the mic, yes. What happened when we, the man turned around? He was so small and a big bunch of banana on his head. The banana fell down. And then, as children, we got really worried. So then, you know what we started to do? If our parents' name was Harry, we started to say, oh, Jones, Jones. So the man would not remember or recognize who we were. <laughs> now, but you know something? We serve a loving God. And it doesn't matter, children, what you're up to. You may not see me again, but you'll always remember that story. You know, um, can I, where is the? Yeah, upside It doesn't matter what we have done. Grown-ups, young, youth, teens, children, you could always go to God. Now, you know, you know what the gentleman said to us? 
<laughs> we were frightened and we were calling all different names so the man wouldn't know our family. The man turned around and he said, hmm, you think I do not know who you all are? We get frightened. But you know what he said? He said, I'll forgive you, but do not do it again. Now, children, it doesn't matter what you have done. When you go to God and you ask God to forgive you, God will forgive you, okay? So always remember that story with this lady, with this little man with a bunch of banana on his head, and then we were playing trick with him, and the banana fall down. We got so frightened, calling all different names, but he said he knew who we were. And always remember that, because it doesn't matter how we try to disguise ourselves, God knows us. Yeah? Would you remember that? Yeah, no? Um, my granddaughter will have, have, have a text here. And she, would you, any one of you like to read the text for me? Yes, come. Then. come. Yeah. come here. We're going to read Matthew 6, verse 7. Verse 14. For it you forgiven men, when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But, but if you do not? But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Amen. Amen. Right? Now, who, who would like to pray? Who would like to pray for us? Would you like to say a prayer? Yes. Yes. yes say. Go ahead. Thank you. Oh, she knows. She will learn. Yes, she will. Thank you. Okay, hi. <laughs> right, come, come, come. Okay, come and pray then. You come. You, you come. Come, I'll teach you. Come on. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Dear. Dear. Jesus. Jesus. For. For. Allowing me. Allowing me. To come. To come. To church. To chat. To, to listen. To listen. To, to this, this children, children story. Story. I pray. I pray. Amen. 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 Now I would like you to come as well. Come. Yeah. Come, yeah. I'd like you to pray as well. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. May you bless us as we are here today, Lord. May you guide us in this children's story. And may you heal the sick people, Lord. And guide us today, Lord. And give us the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Right. Okay, children, later on, you will hear more of my stories. Yeah? And if you're good, if you're good, I'll let you hold one of these flags. And then we'll do some funny things later on. Would you like to do some funny things with me later? Yeah. Right, good. Okay. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Oh, is it my turn? Auntie, for the lovely story. I'm sure we all enjoyed it and we learned a lesson. Uh, we're going to have a song of meditation, and after that, our Auntie Judith Asari will give us the word for today. May God bless us as we go into the next phase of our worship. Happy Sabbath, everyone. The song I'm going to sing is People Need the Lord. I pray you are blessed. Left the high. 
hearts that silent Thank you. Well, there is no more for me to say. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. Thank you. I want to say thank you for my son inviting me here today to be with you all today. Um, it's a joy. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, as she gave the introduction, she told me that I have many adopted children. So your pastor is one of my adopted children. And this is real. I don't just say it for saying its sake. Yeah? And um, I think you know me as well. Oh boy. As I walked in, and then another one said, Hi, Auntie Judith. I'm thinking, who else again know me here? But it is a joy. And you know, God, God is a good God. And I pray and hope that what I'll be presenting to you, it will be a blessing. Let us pray. Most loving Father in heaven, once again, I want to thank you for allowing me to be here. Dear Lord in heaven, I'm asking you to cover me as I give this presentation, I pray. Amen. Amen. God never fails us. 
it doesn't matter what we are going through. God is there with us. You know, when we look at the woman with the issue of blood, you know, and a woman, she was there bleeding for so many years, for 12 years. And because of her faith, because of her faith, when she heard, when she heard that Jesus was in tongue, she didn't want him to see her. She felt that if she went there quietly and just touched the hem of his garment. But you see, the, the thing about it, you know, God knew that she was going to touch him. She, he knew. And, you know, when she touched him, he asked the question, who touched me? Even Peter was astonished when he asked that question. But isn't it wonderful? When she came back, when she came back to him and she said, I touch you, he was able to say to her, because of your faith, your faith, she was healed. And you know, as I listen to the brother that share his testimony this morning, it is wonderful that when God do something in our life for us, it is very important to say thank you. It's very, very important. Because by coming back and sharing, someone there is listening and it will help them. You know, many times our grandparents always say good things come to those who wait, believe, and be patient. And the best things come to those who, who do not give up. It does not matter how dark or gloomy life seems to be, there are better things ahead. And assure that all of us we could say the same thing. Now, as I mentioned in this story, now, we were laughing, we were teasing this gentleman. We think that he didn't know us. And then when he said that he knew us, we get so frightened because we know if he tell our parents what going to happen to us. But he said, don't do it again, I forgive you. And this is the thing that when we go to our Heavenly Father, it doesn't matter what we are going through, the pain, whatever we are going through. Once we, and even before we go to Him, He knows what is in our heart. Now you see, life trials have no warning. When you are not expecting it, it could be losing your job, having marriage problems, being abused or children giving you lots of problems. On top of all that, you may have health issue. And you might think, when this problem is going to end? Now, sisters and brothers, I can tell you there is hope. Let me remind you of the woman with the issue of blood. For 12 years, could you imagine for 12 long years, maybe they had, she had people, maybe they were laughing at her. She was insulted. Many more unpleasant behavior towards her. But in spite of all that, she still had hope. Surely she might have been, had visit her doctor, even herbalist but they could not do anything for her. They couldn't help her. Now, as we read, she heard that Jesus was in tongue, and that might be her last hope for her problem. Though there were thousands of people around Jesus, she decided to still make her way through the crowd to reach and touch the hem of his garment. And that is exactly what she did. And she was healed instantly. 
As I said before, Jesus knew what she was going to do. He asked, who touched my garment? When the question asked, Peter, as I said before, Peter said, Master, the crowd is pressing against you. But Jesus insisted that someone touch him. Now the woman, I guess she was nervous. She came forth and she said, she did it. And he said, daughter, your faith has made me whole. Now, you know, I know we all could relate we all could relate to this story. Sometimes things happen in our lives and what we go through. Now there is another woman again. And we look at, as we look at Hannah, she knew the misery of waiting for dreams that did not come. She was childless. And it did not help that the second wife of her husband had taken had mocked her many times, gloating over her many children. Even Hannah's husband did not seem to understand her distress. Now, waiting is one of the hardest things to do, especially when the years go by. And we see no fulfillment in our dreams and hopes. It's a good thing to learn to wait. We spend a large amount of our time waiting in our life. Now when Hannah poured her agony before God, Eli the priest did not understand either. Yet something about going before God and spelling out her trouble reminded Hannah who God was. She expected him to look on her, to, re to remember and to give her a son. She went away connected, contented, and God understood and remember her. Eventually, Hannah's prayers were answered, and God gave her a son. She named Samuel. When Samuel was old enough, she took him, she took him as she had promised to the house of the Lord and gave him back to God. Now, you know, many times when we in problem, difficulties, we cannot get out. You might say, oh, Jane, mom, dad, auntie, uncle, please help me. Oh, yes, when I feel better or when this is better, I'm going to change. But as you get out of the problem, what happened? You forget them. And you go back and do it again, over and over and over. But you know, we serve a mighty God. He never gives up on his children. He's always there. And even before we go to him, he knows exactly when, the time. But I have learned over the years, sometimes we have to go right down. And when we go right down and some, we go through different experience, it helps us to get better in our life. You know, when I look at these two stories, I look at my life. And also when I heard the brother was talking this morning, I said, isn't it amazing? Now, I came in here this morning I was laughing. I was trying to put these things on. I was moving here. Sometimes I would lean my stick on the chair. You might think, oh, this lady, what is she doing? Is she pretending? No, I'm in pain all the time. I'm in constant pain all the time. But if I do not tell you, you won't understand. You know, you will not understand. And that's why it is lovely when we could take it to the Lord in prayer. Because what man do not understand, God understand. He hear us. Now, I read the scripture reading this morning. If you notice the way I will have to put the paper, because I hardly could see. Yeah? You might think, oh, wow, this lady. Yes. If I said to you, my neck was broken... If I said to you, 
my head was open in half. Would you believe me? Because you see the sort of person I am and what I'm doing, you wouldn't think that this lady has gone through all this. Yeah? If I said to you, you know, they gave me less than 20% chance of surviving. Now, this is a re now, children, I want you to hear this. I want you to listen. Young people, they gave me less than 20% chance of surviving. And I'm here today. I'm only here today because of God. And because of prayers. Prayer changes everything. And I tell you something. If you never used to take prayer seriously, I pray today you will. You will start. Because it doesn't matter what man may throw at you. You heard the, 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 the story of the woman, the issue of blood, the story of Hannah. And I'm telling you my story now. Prayer changes everything. You know, when you feel low, you have, you, you, you're at college and you're fed up. You do not want to do the, the course and you're thinking, ah, man, no, no, no. Turn to God. You know, when I was lying in that hospital bed, I was in a coma. I didn't know what I was saying. But you know something? They wrote everything down. And I was praying. I was singing. God changes everything. And God hear us. God hear us. And I would say also to parents, sometimes we have our children and we think it's a joke. This, this adventurers, this Pathfinder Club is excellent. But it has to start from home. It has to start within home when they are young. You know, the way how you live, the things that you say. They see how mom and dad are living. You know, it affects them as they grow up. Now, many times people ask me, Judith, why are you the way that you are? And you know something? I could turn to them and say, it's because of my grandparents, because of the upbringing I had. And because of that upbringing, when I was lying in that hospital d dying, I still was able to remember my foundation, the songs, the texts from the Bible, the memories, the, the, the funny things that we used to do. You know, and you think, wow. You know, one of the things we used to do again, children, when I was growing up, because as I said to the, in the story, when we at home, they give us so much work to do. So we prefer to go in the garden and just play. And then when time is getting late, we pick the nutmeg up and we bring it. You know, um, I just want you to, if you put the slides on, you will be able to see Thank you. You will able to see some of the, if you just put it on, please. You know, and it's, it may seem funny at the time, but I tell you something. I used to be in that hospital and they said I was laughing, some of the memories. And we had to get up five o'clock in the morning to have worship. And as children, we, we had no choice. We had to get up. And uh, during the time I was in hospital, those things came back. Now, we used to take our grandfather donkey and hide it. So after worship, he would not find the donkey. And he's looking everywhere for the donkey and he cannot find it. Then he have to walk to go to the mountain. And I'm telling you, it could be from here to Birmingham. And he had to walk. And then when he, when he walked, now we as children, we take the donkey and we ride it. Right? Then because he ride the donkey, the donkey used to go very slow. And we will go on the donkey and we will beat the donkey up. Beat it for the donkey to go fast. But the donkey would not go fast at all. But then it was joy the following day after worship. Because you know something? When our grandfather go on the donkey, now the donkey start galling up. And we will be somewhere hiding, laughing to see what the donkey is doing. 
Now, you know, you may ask me why I'm saying all these things. Now, I did not turn to, to in the hospital and said, oh, can I have a bottle of whiskey? Can I have some cigarette? I turned to the word of God. I turned to the memories of my upbringing when I was lying there alone. But I was, physically I was alone, but I was with my God. Now, what you see in there, this is very good. Because you know what they have said? As long as I live, I would never, never see the condition that I was in. So that is the best that I have there. Right? And this, where you see I'm sitting there, that was the first time I, I was in one hospital for about six months before they transferred me home. And when, when they did get me up to go and have a scan, they have to rush me back and lie down. Why? Because the neck was not knitted. So the C5 of my neck was broken. My whole head was open in half. From here, come down. And all my inside was out. And that was not enough. My left arm was completely broken off. They had to get the other part to put together. But, brothers and sisters, I am here today. And I could smile. I could smile at the storm. You know? So prayer changes everything. When you have a problem, take it to the Lord in prayer. And I have seen, in spite of of all what have happened to me the way how God is using me to reach out to others God has a plan for each and every one of us we all have our different gift sometimes we see Jane have a gift or John have something else we try to take days not focusing on what God has given us and you know, in spite of all what have happened to me, I'm seeing how God is using me. And you know, I will tell you a story of a young man that one day we had a, a health expo and I was in the booth where people of the street will come in and we will pray for them. And this young man, he came in his head covered. I didn't see his face, but his head was covered. And when we finished praying for him, I said, would you like me to keep in touch with you? He said, yes. So, I, he gave me his number. And that very same day, I went home and I called him, no respond. But I never stop. And you know what I used to do, brothers and sisters? I will pray and leave a prayer on his phone and after two and a half weeks he called me and he said mom mama you never give up I said no it is God it is God so brothers and sisters sometimes we may be trying to help someone and that person may not be responding and you say oh well I'm going to leave them alone but you know something you could still pray for them and by praying it is amazing how God would allow you to reach out to them now this young man is about 10 years now. He's my adopted son. And it didn't end there. You know, I was somewhere. He called and he said, Mom, I have to go to court. I said, okay, I'll come and go with you. He said, would you? I came up. I, I spoke to my prayer team at church. And I said to them, I'm going, so could you pray? They said, okay. When we went to court that day, my husband dropped me there. And we went in. When the barrister came, the barrister said, you know, there is no representative from the home office today. Hmm. You could imagine immigration problem. The boy was shaking and he was crying and think they would lock him up again. And you know, knowing the sort of person I am, the barrister said, well, I'm going to go to another case and I'll come back after so when the barrister went, I, I said to him, don't worry, boy, I'm, I'm the representative from the home office today. <laughs> and, you know, he said, oh, mom, you're always saying something funny. I said, yes, I am. Then after my son called me and he said, oh, mom, you won't, 
you know, that's my bud son now. You know, he called me and I said, you wouldn't believe it, you know, I'm the representative from the home office today. So he said, oh boy, mom, you're always saying something funny. I said, yes, it's true. Yeah. Right. That was it. When the barrister came back, we went into court. The judge said, well, there is no representative. So he said, okay, I'm going to give you some time with your client to decide what could be done. We went out, went into a room. Now, brothers and sisters, I want you to take note of this. God saved me for a purpose. God has a plan for each and every one of us. Right. We went into that room. Now, he, the boy introduced me as his mother. The barrister turned to me, not to his client, you know, he turned to me. And he said, what is my wisdom in this case? I'm not no lawyer, you know. I'm a counselor, but I'm not a lawyer. So when he asked that, I, I quietly prayed to my God. And then after, I said to the barrister, right, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. Right now, my prayer team is praying for this young man. And I said, as a counselor, I support him and I provide food for him. The barrister never asked the boy no question. He said, let's go back inside. We went inside. As they were talking the Dutch, I was sitting on the other side praying. And they talked the Dutch and they talked the French or the, the Patois, the African language, whatever they were talking about. And I was sitting praying. The judge said, well, you would not hear anything until maybe after the holiday because it was Christmas time. We went back into the room. Hmm. And I said to the barrister, thank you very much for the way how you handled the case in there. Brothers and sisters, children, you know, the barrister turned and said to me, trust in the Lord. Do not lean on your own understanding. That is the barrister. You know, after my son said to me, he said, mom, I cannot understand that. I've been coming here for years. They lock me up. They do all sorts with me. And now you come with me. We got a Christian barrister. I said, it is God work. Let us don't joke with the word of God. Let us continue to put our trust in him. And whatever we could do to help someone, do not turn away from them. Let us do it from our heart. Because sometimes we do things and we still hold grudges against people. No, it would not work like that. You know, we serve a mighty God. Sometimes we're not expecting. Now, when we look again at this woman, could you imagine what she was going through? And just hearing that Jesus in town, she decided, okay, I will go. And it took courage. It took faith for her to get up and go in that crowd. But she did it. She did it. And she was healed. Now look at Hannah. Hannah had her husband. He had another wife. And because the wife was having children and Hannah could not have any, the wife was laughing and doing all sorts. But what did Hannah do? She prayed to God. She prayed and God heard her and God gave her her son. Now sometimes when we make promises, when we get better, we forget. Now I want to say something to you. You know, from since I met in my car accident, every five years I do a Thanksgiving service in Birmingham. Every five years I do a Thanksgiving service. Now, not last the year before, the president, he said to me, Sister Sari, you must not be doing it every five years. It needs to be done every year. And I'm not just doing it for doing its sake. You know, the offering that have been collected over the years, it has been to many different charities in, oh, I have to say, in Africa as well. Yes, offering have been there in the Caribbean, even in here, supporting others. You know, some years ago we had, I show you heard of that hurricane that took place in, in, in the Caribbean and it washed, destroyed a lot of the islands, the Ivan hurricane. 
Now, the Church of England heard of the work that I was doing in the community in Birmingham, and they asked me to go. Eight of us went, six workers and two reporters from the evening of mail. Now, I was very bold. I said to the one, if you're going to send me to my country, they, they were paying my passage. I said, you, you need to give me some money from my school. I went to Adventist school in, the, in Grenada, and they gave me 500 pounds, and I was able to give it to the school. God has a plan for each and every one of us. God is a good God. In spite of the pain, in spite of the difficulties you might be going through, but you're alive. And because you're alive, now I, I, I have to stand up to show you this. Now, because you're alive, you know you could do it. Now, now, don't laugh too much. Um, I always say I've got an extra leg. Yeah? That's my extra leg. God has given me an extra leg. So why, why should I cry? Why should I worry? Now, if I'm walking on my own, I have more problem. But when I'm walking with my extra leg, I could walk properly. You know what I mean? And then, not even that. When you want to go on holiday, you just come with me. Yes. Right, you know what I'm talking about. Because now I'm the first one to get on the plane. Yes. <laughs> I'm the first one to get on the plane. I'm the last one to get out of the plane. But when I get into custom, I'm the first one to get out. Because I do not wait in no queue at all. You're going to tell me we do not serve a mighty God? Why worry? Hmm? Now I show you, you saw some, a few mangoes there. When I have my mango and I enjoy my mango, man, you know, it, it, it is great. God is a good God. God is a good God. Because, you know, when, when I was lying there in a coma, you know, um, my friends, I, I don't share my mangoes, you know, and I mean, Questy will tell you that. You know, I mean, he, he teased me quite a lot, my son. You know, and, and um, someone said the only thing that will take a rung is a mango. And I understand they used to put the drip, squeeze the mango and put it on my lip. And um, the two pastors, Pastor St. Clair and Pastor Burnett, they used to bring all the mangoes. So I understand my room was full with mangoes. Because I love mango. I do not share my mango. If my children are coming and are eating a mango, I'll hide. I don't, you know, so um, they do the same trick on me now. But I have to say, a couple months ago, um, I had a lovely mango, and I was hiding it away from my daughter for a long time. And uh, she went to school, and I thought, okay, that is the best time to have that mango. And as I take the mango, and I <coughs> sit on there to have the mango, the phone rang. And I take the phone up, and it was her school. I thought, Lord in heaven. The teacher, <laughs> and, but, it, but, it, but it was good news. The teacher said, oh, no, it's no problem. It's good news. So, you know, in my heart, I couldn't have the mango alone. So I did share it with her that day <laughs> because it was good. And, you know, you know, I mean, the thing is, this is the sort of God that we serve. You know, sometimes we, we do not want to share we do not want to share what we have, but God always make a way for us, for us to understand his goodness. And you know, let us do not give up. Where there is life, there is hope. Where there is life, there is hope. It doesn't matter what we are going through. Hold on to our heavenly father. Because Why? He cares for us. He cares. You know, as we, as we look at Ephesians chapter 8, chapter 2, verse 8, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God. You know, sometimes we think about ourselves, ourselves. No, it's, it is God. In Thanksgiving, Colossians 3.17 said, And whatever you do, 
whether in word or deed, so it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through me. So brothers and sisters, let us continue. Let us continue to put our trust in God. It doesn't matter what we might be going through. It doesn't matter what may fall at us. It might be sickness. It might be problems upon problems. But God will always make a way for us. And the only way we could do it is if we cannot go down on our knees, we could sit, we could stand, we could walk, and we could talk to our God. Never give up. Never give up. And, uh, you know, this is a song here. Don't listen to the voice, but the words of the song. <clears throat> I will try to share it with you as I close. If I can help somebody as I pass along. If I can cheer somebody with a word or song. If I can show somebody he is traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. If I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a Christian ought, if I can bring back beauty to a word of wrath, if I can spread love's message that the master taught, then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. If I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We just want to thank God for those powerful testimonies. In God we trust. As long as we trust in God, whom shall we fear? May God bless us to have that faith in him because through faith we can all do th things through him who strengthens us. Shall we stand uh, as we sing a closing song? We ask the praise and worship team to come up front, please, and help us. Thank you so much, ma'am, for blessing us. Praise and worship team.
sin and leads to the loving call. Wonderful words of life, oh, so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. your children and dear Lord in heaven I pray dear father as we leave this place dear father we would not leave from your presence bless each and every one of us I pray amen amen, amen. Thank, thank you so much you. current praise team thank you. Uh, there is an afternoon program uh, so you're all encouraged to be here for 2.30 so you need to be here before 2.30 because the program actually starts at 2.30. I'm sure that is clear. May God bless us uh, as we continue with fellowshipping with one another. Uh, the praise and worship team will come up front now. Thank you. Uh, one three six on the Christian song as we live, the last deacons uh, to lead us out. Where he may lead me, I will go. 